Madam Chair, Acting Minister spoke about the importance of building connections between people as a way to create greater social bonds and cohesion. He also spoke passionately about the challenges that we will continue to face in establishing a strong national identity. Madam, in a diverse society like Singapore, social bonds and national identity emerge both out of experiences that we have in common and experiences that are unique to each one of us. Strong social bonds and a sense of identity will help create social capital. And as the Minister painted the pictures of this, as Singaporeans being able to help, trust and rely on each other. So let me also add by saying that it is also a sense of community and a natural affinity, a natural affinity for our fellow Singaporeans. Having tightly knit communities not only gives each one of us the emotional support that we need, but also gives us the confidence to bring new Singaporeans into our midst. Mr. Bei Yang King and Mr. David Ong have asked about how MCCY will strengthen the national identity and build social capital through our efforts across various sectors. Madam Chair, MCCY's programs aim to encourage bonding within the communities and also a richer appreciation of the diversity across all the communities. With your permission, Madam Chair, may I display some Im images on the LED screens? Yes, please. Thank you. Madam, allow me to first elaborate on our efforts in the arts sector. Our community engagement efforts will continue to provide opportunities for people to come together and share a common passion. Mr. Arthur Fong spoke about the arts and the cultural interest groups and community arts and cultural clubs, which have been set up across the island. These groups are made up of community enthusiasts and the volunteers with support from the Community Engagement Master Plan. They have helped their fellow Singaporeans to see the arts as a part of a community life and also as something that they can really enjoy everywhere and every day. So I thank the member for his suggestions regarding our funding of such groups and we will continue to refine our support to the community. Mr. Arthur Fong also mentioned the ukulele interest group network during his speech and other members may have also seen this group in action during last month's Chingay procession or Chingay parade. This group's achievements deserve special mention. Since last September, over 1,800 Singaporeans between the ages of 4 and 92 have picked up the ukulele from Mr. Lo Tse Yong and other community champions. So for members who are unfamiliar, the ukulele is similar to a guitar, but it is smaller in size and also it is friendlier to the beginners. Tse Yong, a community volunteer and musician, thought that it is an instrument that can bring music into the lives of people with no musical background. So being part of this growing ukulele community, motivated participants can master six songs within just a few lessons, going from novices to Ching -e performance in a few short months. So members of this house, if you are keen to learn ukulele, I'll be most happy to introduce you to uh, Che Yong. So maybe perhaps at the next year Ching -e parade, some of you will be able to perform. More importantly, their newfound passion for the ukulele brought the neighbours together closer. And regular practice sessions have also become a place, a common place to meet with the new friends. So we will continue to support such opportunities for Singaporeans to bond over a love for the arts. Madam Chair, now, now let me proceed to highlight how MCCY's efforts in the heritage sector that can help to promote greater understanding across communities and bring Singaporeans closer over their shared values and stories. In MCCY, we all agree with Mr. Sipo Weeping that heritage, it is not distant or detached. Heritage actually lives within us. Our members, our memories make up a big part of our heritage and our identity. 
And therefore, our memories are created from diverse experiences, and these experiences can be shared through stories. Mr. Alex Yam asked about what MCCY will be doing to preserve the parts of our heritage that extend beyond the physical. Helping Singaporeans to tell and share stories will play a big part in the MCCY's role to help preserve our heritage and also to build our national identity, something that has been so passionately talked about by members of this House. NHB, or National Heritage Board, will be launching a new travelling exhibition to honour and also to remind us of the brave healthcare workers who stood on the front lines during the SARS outbreak and how Singapore stood behind them as they worked to overcome this crisis. NHB is working with Tan Tock Seng Hospital and the Ministry of Health and the exhibition will be launched next week. The new exhibition is part of the National Heritage Board's Resilience Through Heritage series of exhibitions. This exhibition tells the stories of moments which have brought us together as a people and also to remind us of the strength of the Singaporean spirit. Our programs will continue to promote awareness of these defining moments of Singapore's history which have played a very strong role in shaping our identity. Besides these stories that have touched us all, we have also amazed some deeply personal stories that are worth sharing. We therefore agree with members' suggestions to go beyond national level efforts. Our efforts to foster pride in the distinct heritage of different communities will also help to maintain bonds and those held together by unique experiences. Take Madam Moslima as an example. She is a former resident of Kampong Jali, Kampong Kaji, near the Southern Mosque. In what it is Kampong Glam today, they may not live together along Basora Street anymore, but Madam Moslina, Moslima and her neighbours still share fond memories of the Goto Royong and the close community bonds of their Kampong Kaji days. When NHB was creating the Kampong Glam Heritage Trail last year, these old neighbours came together to share their stories. A place close to the heart now also has a place in our shared history. And the trail is a reminder of the community bonds that she shared with her neighbours. And the memories of Madam Moslima and her former neighbours, as well as that of the many neighbours of my former and current residents of Kampong Grand areas, are all captured in a very nice handy guidebook called the Kampong Grand uh, Heritage Trail. By encouraging Singaporeans to come forward, with their own stories, our approach to heritage celebrates not only those things that are common to us, but also those things which, are make, which make us, each community, a very unique one. This openness to diversity should also underpin our approach to the traditional arts. I fully agree with Mr. David Ong that embracing diversity should be our hallmark as Singaporeans. Singapore is indeed fortunate to be a cosmopolitan port city, sitting between the East and the West. Our forefathers had brought their rich cultural traditions with them in the past, and we can continue to benefit from the vibrancy that new immigrants and visitors bring to our shores today. I fully agree with Mr. Bei Yang King that we should do more to attract new audiences and uh, supporters for traditional arts. Traditional arts will remain vital to MCCY's effort to promote mutual understanding and appreciation across different communities. And we will continue to support the efforts to help traditional arts forms to take roots and also to flourish. Madam Chair, NEC had launched the $23 million National Traditional Arts Plan in 2010. This has strengthened our efforts to create a more vibrant traditional arts scene that reflects the diversities of the Singapore society and also to encourage greater interest among local audiences. NSC supported a total of 60 traditional arts groups last year 
And going forward, we'll continue to invest significantly towards key strategies to support the traditional arts and the arts groups. So let me elaborate. First, the National Traditional Arts Plan will continue to support organizational development for traditional arts groups. A new initiative in this area is the Traditional Arts Organization Consultancy Program. It was held for the first time between August last year and January this year. A number of traditional arts seed grant recipients have participated in this program. And the feedback given by them has been very positive. So through this program, the groups have improved their administration, strategic planning, and organizational development capabilities, which will help them to become more professional and self-sustaining. We will continue to support traditional arts groups to establish themselves and also to create a strong and sustainable impact on the cultural landscape. Secondly, we will also continue to support the passing of the traditional arts forms from one generation to the next. So that Singapore can continue to draw on the traditional art forms in maintaining our links with the past. Two of our valuable platforms are the National Indian Music Competition and the National Chinese Music Competition. Aspiring towards success in this competition has helped to motivate young talents like 17-year-old Gu Zhen player Nicholas Quack to strive for greater excellence in the craft. Nicholas won second place in the youth cat category of the competition in 2010, and he continued to develop his talent and strengthen his interest in the instrument. So finally, he was able to achieve the first place last year. And along the way, he also took part in the Dongyang Cup International Zhen Art Week in Harabing, China, where he also managed a first place finish in his category. So young practitioners like Nicholas will help the traditional arts engage and also to inspire new generations of Singaporeans and continue to flourish in the future. Finally, we also continue to support the creations of a traditional arts programs and activities to engage a wider Singaporean audience. For example, last July, NAC supported Miura Pasatari Melayu by the Malay Dance Committee. The event brought together local and regional Malay dance groups to present demonstrations, performances, and seminars in both traditional and contemporary Malay dance. Held over three years at various venues in the, uh, in the explanation, the event attracted over 10,000 people gaining more fans for the Malay dance. Madam, our support for traditional arts and heritage recognizes these links to our past as living things which evolve and strengthen as the different cultures within our shores share their practices. So they add colors to Singapore's story and they can form part of the cultural balance which Ms. Jenny Ko spoke so passionately about during last week's budget debate. So equally important, shared appreciation for traditional arts can form bridges across our diverse community. Madam Chair, talking about diversity, now I would like to switch from China 5 to China 8 and to carry on my speech in, in Mandarin. To see. The government's effort to support the traditional arts will only have an impact through the good work of artists, enthusiasts, and supporters. For example, a resonance, a Sheng ensemble founded under Thompson CC's Youth Club is one such group. Formed in uh, 2011, the ensemble is made of mostly of young musicians below 30 years old, many of whom are continuing their practice from schooling days. The NAC, uh, last December, they hold their first concert. Uh, besides showcasing their talent, they also use, use this platform to deepen the audience understanding of Sheng, this traditional instrument, 
all this effort has played an important role to uh, to create a, a better understanding of traditional arts. I hope there will be more uh, traditional artists to tap on the fund provided by the government and promote traditional arts. And the government will also continue to support traditional art practitioners with a passion for educating the next generation. Uh, for example, Ms. Lin Meilian, uh, who received an NAC Arts Scholarship to pursue an undergraduate degree in Beijing uh, in Peking Opera at China's National Academy of Chinese uh, Theater Arts. Uh, before, I don't know, uh, in arts, we also have a, a bachelor degree. Unlike most scholarship recipients, Mei Lian is a traditional arts veteran. She co-founded the Tian Yuan Peking Opera Society more than 20 years ago. And she has been uh, teaching Peking Opera at uh, Dangman High School since 1996. Her passion for cultivating a new generation of performers has motivated her to improve her teaching methods. With her training, she hopes to make Peking Opera more relevant to today's audience. In other words, she hopes through learning Peking Opera and the localized Peking Opera, so so we can modernize the Peking Opera and show it to the younger Singaporeans. So young Singaporeans can also appreciate the art form in another perspective. So we look forward to her further contributions when she returns from Beijing. Finally, the contributions of private sector champions should not go unnoticed. Since 1987, the Singapore Federation of Chinese Clan Associations, SPH, and the SCCCI, and the PA have organized the River Hongbao to celebrate the Chinese New Year. And the event has uh, integrated many elements of Chinese traditional arts. This year, the event included a harmony night uh, which brought together not just the Chinese traditional arts groups, but also Malay and Indian traditional arts groups to highlight the diversity of Singapore culture. I believe the motivation for these individuals and groups extend beyond the passion for their respective art forms and also comes from an adherence to the cultural traditions which are embodied within their practice. We will continue to support the development of traditional arts not only as a source of greater vibrancy and, in, and inspiration for the art scenes, but also as a conduit for our rich cultural heritage to be passed from one generation to the next and shared from one community to another. We are Channel 5. Madam Chair, in, while an appreciation for our diversity can bring us together, insensitivity towards our differences can also drive us apart. Mr. Zainuddin Norden cautioned us against the further erosions of the sense of communities which we have built painstakingly since independence. And I share his concern wholeheartedly. So our sense of community has changed. So with the internet and the mobile phones replacing face-to-face -face interaction. So Mr. Desmond Lee also reminded that it is all too easy for a simple, impulsive post on Facebook or so single insensitive blog entry to undo what we have achieved in building a harmonious society. Mr. Desmond Lee also reminded this House that while we work hard to integrate new members into our society, we must not neglect to bridge potential racial and religious fault lines. Madam Chair, I fully agree with members that Singapore cannot remain as a society that shows tolerance only on the surface. We should instead work towards 
building genuine understanding and respect across our racial and religious communities. MCCY will continue to, dig, to make this our priority on this journey. So members will also be familiar with our work in the interracial, interreligious circles, or IRCCs. IRCCs are set up to promote dialogue and also to foster friendships across faith and ethnicities. So since December 2010, IRCCs have held a series of four IRCC at Heartlands events to increase understanding of our religious, ethnic, and the community groups in an interactive way. The most recent event was held in December last year, and it involved seven religious organizations and featured skilled-down replicas of their places of worship. And participants will also be able to learn about the history and the practices of the Baha'i, Buddhist, Christian, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, and Taoist faiths at once, all under one roof. This will greatly enrich their understanding of the multicultural Singapore. More of such creative methods of outreach are indeed needed, and we intend to do more. A genuine attempt to understand our fellow Singaporeans for other races and religions must also come from each one of us, and not just from the government alone or government policies and uh, programs alone. MCCY will therefore focus on encouraging more ground up initiatives where Singaporeans of different backgrounds can come together and co-create more opportunities for us to celebrate our diversity. So since 2009, a group of passionate youngsters of different races have been organizing an annual event called Rafael Sico. I'm not so sure how to pronounce this, right? But uh, it is an acronym for Racial Fusion and Culture. So they call themselves Refuge Seeker. Sounds quite cool. So to promote racial harmony amongst their peers, this youth brought young Singaporeans together through music and dance. And these are the common languages shared by people of all races, particularly among the young people. Refuge Seeker has grown in popularity so the most recent event was held in December, which featured a flash mob along, along Orchard Road and bringing the spirit of the event to even more Singaporeans. So MCCY will establish a $5 million harmony fund to support such ground-up initiatives. And we want to encourage the blossoming of such activities across the island so that all Singaporeans will have an opportunity to gain a greater understanding as well as the appreciation of our racial and religious diversity. Non-profit organizations will be able to apply for co-funding from the Harmony Fund to undertake worthy projects. So this could be projects that raise awareness of the importance of racial and religious tolerance, promote knowledge and appreciations of different cultural practices to encourage interactions between different racial or religious groups, or reduce negative stereotypes or misconceptions about our or other communities. So with this new fund, we hope that more groups will come forward and share new and creative ideas to make Singapore a strong, vibrant, and, if I may say, a more colourful society. So to conclude, MCCY recognises that we are a nation made out of different people, and all with our own passions and our own stories. And our efforts to create this sense of community will respect and celebrate the diversity of our experiences. MCCY will continue to support Singaporeans in sharing their passions, their stories, traditions, and perspectives to create a strong community that enrich one another, and at the same time, a nation united not only by our common bonds, but also through an appreciation of our differences. Thank you.